Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting series of SinLab podcast. My name is Uche Namadi and I'll be your host. Today, SinLab brings you a full package on a hot topic, unraveling paternity fraud through DNA testing. With me here today to unravel paternity fraud are professionals who have brought their expertise to the table. Before we proceed, let's meet our esteemed guests. I'll be reading their bio as well. My first guest here is Ms. Patsy Mokunga. Patsy Mokunga is the Legal and Compliance Manager at SINLAB Nigeria Limited. She earned her law degree from Afe Babalola University and was called to the Nigerian bar after completing her studies as the, at the Nigerian Law School. Patsy has extensive experience as a corporate and commercial lawyer and maintains a strong interest in health law. You're welcome, Ms. Patsy. Thank you so much. We also have here Mrs. Oluyemi Olaogun. Mrs. Oluyemi Olaogun is a seasoned professional with a background in science laboratory technology and from the University of Ilorin. She holds a master's degree in public administration and is currently pursuing additional courses to further enhance her career, including advanced key accounts and business management. With 19 years of experience in the healthcare industry, Mrs. Oluyemi has demonstrated exceptional leadership and client management skills. She served as the team lead in the pre-analytical department at SINLAB Nigeria for 12 years before advancing to her current role as a key account manager, where she efficiently manages SINLAB's top clients, ensuring quick complaints resolution and handling special test requests in collaboration with international partners. She is passionate about guidance and counseling, especially on issues she has personally navigated in the past. Outside of her professional life, Mrs. Oluyemi is a loving wife and a mother of two children. You're welcome, Mrs. Olaogun. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Lastly, we have Dr. Alani Uweye. Dr. Alani Yi is a consultant hematologist at SINLAB Nigeria and a fellow of West African College of Physicians. He serves as a lecturer and the acting head of Department of Hematology and Blood Transfusion at the College of Medicine, Olabisi Onabanjo University, Shagamu. A passionate medical educator and sickle cell advocate, Dr. Weye is a member of the Nigeria Society of Hematology and Blood Transfusion and the Genetic Society of Nigeria. Additionally, he holds the position of Public Relations Officer for the Association of Prevention of Sickle Cell Anemia of Nigeria, APOSCAN. You are all welcome to this podcast. Thank you very Thank much. You I see we're all much. looking beautiful and we, we're almost <laughs> wearing the same color. And Patsy, might I say, you share the same name with my mom. But that's besides the point. <laughs> so, dear listeners, do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow SINLAB Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Now, going to Dr. Weye. You know, we are, in this first episode, we want to try to understand paternity fraud. So, I'm going to ask, I'm wondering, because I'm sure our listeners may not even understand. So, I want you to break it down for us. What is paternity fraud? And how common is it? Mm. Thank you very much. Paternity fraud is an intentional misinformation or misappropriation wow. of the biological paternity of a man by a mother or a woman. So the key words there are is the intentional. Yeah, that got me. Intentional. Yes. <laughs> misinformation and misappropriation. Yeah. And um, well, um, the incidence worldwide is usually between 0.8% to about 33%. But in Nigeria, um, a study done in 2015 put the figure at about um, 30%, you know, in Nigeria currently. So that's about three out of 10 
you know, um, cases, you know, that's, that's what basically wow. means. it means, that's what it translates to. So, but um, the incidence in disputed cases mm. is, is about, um, of paternity fraud in disputed cases, yes. legal cases, yes. should be between <clears throat> 17 to 33%. So, um, those are the figures I have on, you know, the incidences of paternity frauds in the world. And then, of course, here in Nigeria too. Thank you very much. So the key word intentional, that's quite disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> well, why 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 do you think people intentionally do that though? Well, um, there are a lot of reasons for it. Um, for me, I think the first thing is um the issue of um fidelity. I I would like to use the word um free sex, you know, so to say. Oh, you wow. know, nowadays um, sex is as 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 cheap as it comes, and um, there are lots of people who. Um, especially guys who prefer to date married women because they are easier to deal with than, you know, oh single my ladies. God. So they usually wouldn't give them problems. Some of them would even pay them, you know, for the sex and all that. Then, of, of course, again, there is this issue of um, pregnancy frenzy. I call it, you know, pregnancy frenzy. I'm, you, you just picture this um, particular um, situation where um, a guy is going out with a girl. I mean, sorry, a guy is going out with a girl and then... The guy is really not serious, you know, mm. has really not been serious. And they get the yeah. girl just goes out to get pregnant, just to actually get him to, to and commit. And ties on the guy. You know, just to get him to commit. He <clears> just <throat> wants to get pregnant. And of course, well, um, and you know that most times these days you have, um, um, there's an adage in my language that says, um, the suitors of a lady, is, mm. the, the lady has about 201 suitors. It's the one on top. That is the, is the husband. So you find out that you have um, lots of ladies these days dating more than one person. So, and usually um, they tend to settle down for the most serious, yes. not necessarily the one they love most. You okay. understand? So this also can also contribute to it because I've heard of a case where um, someone was forced to marry um, um, a man she did not love and they were together for, five, for 25 years and she had five children for him. And at the end of the day, one day she just woke up, she wanted a divorce. And why did she want a divorce? She was like, okay, I never loved you. And all the five children I had were for my lover. You know, hey. I think her parents did not allow her to marry, you know, the person. Wow. Had <laughs> so, these are, so these are some of the things that sometimes, you know, a lot of times you find contributing to paternity. Fraud. And of course, there's, there's also the issue of switched babies. Oh, you see these are hospitals. Pain? Yeah, in the yes. hospital. I read somewhere where a particular nurse somewhere... And before she died, she confessed that she swapped about 5,000 babies yeah. or something. 5,000? Yeah. My God. She, 5, yes. babies. Yeah. she just did it for the fun of it. So, so For you, the fun? <laughs> so you, 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 you can see that oh. um, these are some of the issues, you know, that we are having. This. And of course, let's, let's now come back home. Nigeria nowadays, things are hard. So, I mean, if you have a couple, they are struggling, and then you have a man somewhere who um, wants to help out and he offers sex, the woman might, you know, just decide to give in for, you know, for social help, security in purposes. In exchange for also, the help. Yes. So I feel there's a whole lot of um, factors responsible for, you know, paternity fraud. You Sorry, know, can I ask, no, okay. do you feel like, um, you know, our culture kind of puts pressure on, no, should I say pressure, expects you to have children. Do you think that um, that could contribute to paternity fraud. You know, we yeah. have like womb, what we call womb watchers. You know, once a woman mm -hmm. gets married, mm -hmm. they'll start counting for you. Yeah, like what's Do going on? Do you think on? that it puts pressure on? Uh, it could cause paternity because I feel like yeah. it could be a cause. Like if you are not getting pregnant and you're wondering why, mm. and you feel like, yeah. and so somebody might whisper in your ear, like <laughs> maybe mm. your husband is the issue. And men don't in this side of the country. They don't like to accept the yeah. accept for, fertility. Yes, that they the have probability the even. Yes. You yes. know, so I most feel likely like, gets pushed yes. to the women. Yes, yes. I quite yes. agree. And I that weight agree can... You. That pressure. Yes, I quite ah, agree. Thank you for that. That's yes. actually a valid mm. point. So, yeah. Patsy, keep up the energy because I'm coming <laughs> for you. <laughs> so, I wanted to ask legally now, what are the legal implications for the alleged father, mother and child when paternity fraud is discovered? Well, the thing is... In Nigeria, we do not have um, a law that provides for paternity fraud. Wow. So it's not a crime. Mm. It's not an offense in any way, except maybe morally. Um, and paternity fraud would usually, um, when it's even discussed legally in Nigeria, it's 
um, within the context of marriage, you know, not mm. even outside the context of marriage. Because, well, our society is very, um, very leans heavily into the... Uh, culture? Yeah, our culture mm -hmm. provides a lot for marriage. It leans heavily into marriage. So okay. you'll find that even when things like this are provided for, nobody's going to be asking about... Um, nobody is going to be asking about an Ill illegitimate child. It's mostly yes. about In marriage. So yes. even if you were going to look for a law that um, covers paternity fraud, you look into maybe the Matrimonial Causes Act or the Matrimonial Causes Rules mm -hmm. because they are around marriage and there's no provision for it. So... Um, you can't hold a woman for intentionally deceiving a man legally mm. And mm. for paternity fraud. Wow. You actually can't. But in you can bring it up maybe um, on that. So it's not a criminal matter, but you can bring it up as a civil matter. Okay. Um, where And generally, there's a principle in law that says where there's a wrong, there should be a remedy. Do you understand? Yes, yes, so if okay. there is a wrong, even if um, this, there's a gap in the law, something must provide for it. Sure. And therein comes civil law where you can bring it up as a wrong done to you. See, and, um, you know, you would try to get damages like if you, this is, has affected me emotionally, affected me mentally, it has affected my family, it has had financial in, implications yeah. for me, you know, and I need to be remedied for that. And sure. the law can come in that way, you know, to help the situation, okay. so to speak. So I picked something you just mentioned now, affecting you emotionally and mm. all that. So I wanted to ask, how does paternity fraud impact families emotionally or even psychologically? Uh, it definitely will affect everybody. Maybe, um, I think even the person who committed the fraud, like the woman, because if you have a child, it t I, I feel like it takes a lot of mental um, energy to keep up appearances, to lie to somebody that this child is not his child. When yeah. you know, you oh, probably right. know who the real father is. Then you're going to, Keep up that energy, keeping that secret the for the years face, to come. Like nothing. How, who are you going to tell? And you know, generally, I believe that um, if a secret, if you tell one person a secret, you've told a lot of people. Yes. Are you going to tell sure. your family and not tell his family? Then for the man himself, whether you be a man or be a woman, we should be able to all relate with, you know, falling in love with somebody based on the fact that this person is yours. And then you find out that the basis of the relationship itself is fractured. And for the child, I mean, all of us here have parents. What if you wake up one day and find out that you're, the person you've thought of huh. as your father your entire life is not Depression, your father? Depression, no. It can... It, it messes with the core of your person in that it messes with your identity. Who are you? Really? A part of our yes. identity is where do we come from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. People that birth us and when that question is now raised and it's like the person you thought you came from is not the oh, person you came from can be quite disturbing it changes everything oh thank yeah. you very much yeah. so um that's insightful yeah interesting. very very yes <laughs> yeah. so i was even going to ask now um i'll speak with um mrs yemi so what steps should someone take if they suspect they are a victim of a paternity fraud what do they do mm -hmm. like she just said now that if you just learned that uh, for instance, not you, but yeah. you just found out that your dad is not your dad. What steps can one take? Okay. From uh, from the look of things, especially in our surrounding here in Nigeria, so we feel psychologically, definitely, that would be on ground. So for one to get over it, number one, we need to allow that emotional trauma. It will definitely come up then allow you to, it to. It's a face on its own. To run its course. It runs its on, on its own. So allow it to relax. So there's no how you can hold the person down that, no, I wouldn't want to get over it. Let the person manifest that experience. Then going forward, then I think oh, we need to like um, invite in professional counselors okay. to come in to advise. Okay. To allow the person to see, okay, to bring the person down, okay, this is what phase you need to go through. Okay. This is the other phase you need to go through. So it's, it's not going to be there it's forever. A huge change. It's a huge change. Mm, so yes. you need a, a, a mental person that will encourage you from level one to level two to level three to okay. make sure that you get over that trauma. Okay. Then from there, you need to like rewrite your story. Yeah. So rewrite your story. Then definitely 
you sit down and try to acknowledge the fat around you. Okay. Because if you feel that you want to stick to that, it's a stigma on its own, yes. especially when the public are not aware yes. about mm. the situation. So yes. it's a stigma that you think, how do I get over this? How will people see me out there? But it's a cost on its own that yeah. we have to run. Then you also have to come in to of write course. your story. So yeah. if you can be able to write your story and acknowledge the fact that the father is not my father, then it's decision on your on you also to acknowledge that, okay, will I accept this man as my father? He's been there for me, all okay. true. So a decision lies on the person. Thank you. So I, too, mm. I see your point. Dr. Yeah. Where, you want to add anything yeah. briefly? Uh, for me, it's, I mean, that, that relates, you know, to someone who is an adult. Yeah. I'm talking about minors who, um, I would say, maybe like an adolescent. I mean, yeah. someone who has some form of personality formed already and yeah. has some sort of identity. And for example, let's say an 11-year-old child or a 12-year-old child who, you know, is known in school or people around in church, any, everywhere knows, oh, you are the son of so-so-so and so, and then you are not having these identity crises mm -hmm. that are telling you that. So for for those kind of children, I think it's very, very important for, for, for us to be empathetic about them. Mm -hmm. And then it's also very, very important to be, to also protect the identity because um, there's a whole lot of things coming around, mm -hmm. you know, about paternity testing now and this way, you know, people are blowing things out of proportion. But sometimes I feel we need to consider these children, especially the minors, because especially at that level, because to me, that level is a very precarious you yes, know, stage, stage where yes. anything that goes wrong with the development of the child can I can affect you, them actually, entirely. Can affect them. So you can never really do wrong with, you know, a psychologist, a child yes, psychologist yes. as the case may be, but... As the father who has been defrauded, huh. I would advise that um, every child is innocent and it should be kept that way. Yeah. And you should try as much as possible to protect the innocence, you know, and then the sanity, you know, of that huh. child. I was actually going to ask her a question. She said it's a civil stuff. But then what if, I mean, someone discovers that he had been defrauded by his wife, you know, paternity huh. fraud and all that. And as a result of that, of that, he loses his life. What what happens? What's, what's, what yeah. what does the law have to, have, yeah. have to say about that? Because, uh, you know, the person died as a result of the paternity fraud. So how how can the law come in in that case? What's what huh. what is what is the angle of the law on that? Well, that I I believe well, it will be for the courts to determine at the end of the day. Um, and it will be it will be determined by how many legal issues you can pull in that direction. Because, like I said, whether however we want to do it, though, paternity fraud is not provided for. It's not a crime, yes. right? So, but if you are now going to take her to court um, for allegedly killing mm -hmm. her husband, you're going to have to tie that debt beyond a reasonable doubt to the paternity fraud. Like, like, then, like maybe have, we have like some kind true. of evidences. Uh, <laughs> you know, evidence to make sure that you... have a cardiac arrest immediately. Yeah, but, uh, it's, you, it's, you're going to now have to prove... Like, what, there are so many reasons why a person could suffer a cardiac arrest. Okay, maybe wait. he was unwell. You, and you, are, you are taking us to the courtroom now. <laughs> so I'll have to say thank you very much <laughs> to all of you. This has been very informative. Please, to anyone that is affected or a victim of paternity fraud, please seek legal counsel and seek to surround yourself with family. Do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Synlab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.